After a fortnight, I was at last granted an audience with Her Majesty, Himiko of Yamatai. I must confess, she is unlike any woman I have ever encountered. Beautiful, yet inscrutable, calculating even. She surrounds herself with her priestesses of the sun. No men attend her, save the general of her armies. When I met with her alone, I came to realize that she is not at all what she seems. I was sent by my lord to spy on her, to assess the strength of her armies. But now, I feel she is the one assessing me. My lord has perhaps underestimated the threat of Yamatai. Though I cannot gauge the true strength of her storm god, I cannot deny a powerful feeling that the Sun Queen should not be trifled with. I have spoken to some of the villagers on the island. I was expressly forbidden to leave the palace, but this did not stop me. My duties here are clear. I must learn the truth, but the stories I uncovered defy belief. Rumors abound of the Queen's communion with the spiritual world. They say she commands the sun and the rain, that her lands are abundant by her will alone. <laughs> this is certainly nonsense. But what can be the cause of such whispers? Is this how she controls her people? By engaging their primitive superstitions? I saw absolute reverence in their eyes when they spoke of her. Yet, I also sense fear. Her people are treated with fairness, taxed reasonably, and are well protected by her storm god. No wonder some of them even pray to her. It's as if she were more than just a queen to them. Spreading discontent through her people may well be a harder task than I imagined. Today, I am Hoshi, daughter of Hiro and Kokoro. Tomorrow, I will be Hoshi, daughter of the sun. The queen has spoken, and I was given the robes. Every girl in every village dreams of this honor. Mother cannot stop crying, and father is beaming with pride. I have never seen him smile so much. This greatest of honors will raise my family to the heights of Yamatai society. We will want for nothing, and someday the Sun Queen may even choose me to take her place. And yet, I cannot deny my feelings. At first I dismiss them as simple nerves, but the unease has grown within me. I could never refuse the call. To do so would invite ruin to my family, but I am frightened of my queen. It is time for me to leave this accursed island. I have seen enough of Yamatai. I cannot explain the power the Sun Queen wields, but it is not of this earthly plane. As I suspected, she knew my intent the moment I set foot on this island. She has manipulated me, toyed with me to see what information I would seek, but she always knew. If I am allowed to leave this place alive, I must warn my lord, warn him that we should avoid Yamatai at all costs. If we wish access to her seas, we should pay any tribute she requires, but we should never cross the Sun Queen. To do so would lead to our ruin. Of the other things I have seen, those dark horrors, I can never speak of again. I want for nothing now. As a priestess of the Sun Queen, I stand above all others in her court. I'm being instructed in languages, etiquette, history, warfare, all the skills needed to rule. And the Queen has been like a mother to me. Warm, attentive, loving. But it all feels false, like some kind of performance. When I talk to the other priestesses, I sense disquiet. Some of them feel as I do. Perhaps all of them, but why? What is it that we all fear? My queen, as I stand in your light, I swear this oath of allegiance to you. As your first storm guard and general of your armies, I will serve you unconditionally and protect the lands of Yamatai and all your people. I will stand at your side for the remainder of my days relinquishing my post only at your command. If I should fail in my duties, my life is forfeit. My heart beats at your command. My breath is drawn at your pleasure. From this moment onwards, I answer only to you. Storm Guard warriors, today we stand on the brink of a great change. 
The enemy fleet that sails to our shores will be the last to ever attempt an invasion of our beloved Yamatai. The rage of our great Sun Queen will raise up a mighty storm, and we will ride forth upon the winds to destroy them. But when we emerge victorious, we will not stop. A new day will dawn as our Queen's light will reach across the ocean to touch all lands. While we of Yamatai bask in the warmth of her grace, those who oppose us will burn. The Sun Queen grows old. Soon she will choose her successor. I fear it will be me. I am now her favorite. She dotes on me, calls me her precious first daughter. Like a doll, she always keeps me close to her, brushing my hair, dressing me in her favorite clothes. It unsettles me beyond words, but more disturbing, she constantly gazes upon my features as if, as if she's looking at her own reflection. I have failed, my queen. The ritual was corrupted. The priestess Hoshi knew only death could save her and took her own life. Now the first and last Sun Queen lives a half-life, a soul in a decaying body. She raises in storms which will never abate while her soul is tied to this earth. My storm guard are sworn to protect her. They must continue, but I cannot. I have no choice now but to meet my fate. Tonight, I climb the stairs to the Chamber of the Sun, but I will never submit to the ritual. I will not emerge queen. None will ever believe what I now know to be the truth. A twisted evil beyond imagining lives within the Sun Queen. An evil that hungers for more than just the land and seas of Yamatai. This madness cannot continue. So I go to the Chamber, armed with the stolen dagger of her Stormguard General. By the time he realizes what I have done, it will be too late. For the sake of Yamatai and all the priestesses that would follow me, I must die. Darling, think. Think before filing those papers. I've... I've sunk the last of my fortune into this expedition, but it's all going to come back tenfold. If, if you divorce me now, you won't see a penny of it. You've been with me since I was nothing. You know what I'm capable of achieving. I, I haven't lost my touch. I'm just at a low point right now, don't you see? I'm on to something here. Laura, you remember her, my, my young protege. She has real data to back up her theories, but she doesn't have my savvy. It's going to be my name on the discovery and my face in front of the cameras. If this all pans out, the show will be huge. If you want to leave me then, I, I promise I won't fight you. But please, just wait on it. I, I can't have this kind of publicity muddling my image, please. Baby, I don't even know how to begin this, so I'm just gonna come right out with it. Alicia is yours. Maybe you've known it all along, but since I signed back on board the Endurance, I just can't keep the truth from you any longer. You've got to understand, I never meant to cut you out of her life, but I know you, Roth. I know how you live and what you want. Staying in one place and raising a kid is not on your agenda. Maybe I screwed up. Maybe I should have let you make a choice. But I made it for you, for what I thought was best. After the expedition, when the time is right, let's talk about the future. Take some time to think about what you want, okay? Alicia, honey, I didn't want to write this, but if I don't do it now, I might not have another chance. Your mama got herself into some trouble, and... I might have to be gone for a very long time. I don't know when or if you'll ever read this, but I want you to know I fought for you. Everything I did in my life was for you. All the time away, all the money I saved, all the sacrifices. I'm sorry for everything you're gonna have to go through without me. If I don't make it back, find Conrad Roth. You've never met him, but he's the best man I've ever known, and he's your father. You have his eyes. 
You're the light of my life, and I love you more than anything. This island is more than I could have hoped for. Of, of course, these islanders are absolutely insane. Those poor people from the Endurance, so... so tragic, but honestly, it adds to the drama. <laughs> Not only is this the mythical land of Yamatai, but the shipwrecks and the, the modern-day cultists. It warrants at least two documentaries, maybe even a series. Oh, Lord, this place is going to ignite the world's imagination, and, and I'm going to be right in the center of it all. Such a huge relief. All my chips were on this one number. I just need to be careful now. This situation could spin out of control on a dime. Once I have this Matthias fellow's ear, I, I can convince him that there's much to gain in cooperating. I mean, he can't honestly believe the things he preaches to these men, right? They're, they're just lost and confused. I'll help to bring them all back to civilization. The sponsors, oh, the sponsors are gonna line up for this exclusive. The story is huge. Lara, I'm sorry. I got you into this mess. I made a promise to your father. The last time I saw him, I swore I would look after you, keep you out of trouble. And what did I do? I put you right in the thick of it. Now you're the one looking after me. You know, you're just like your father. He was smarter, wiser, and stronger than anyone I knew. And he never gave up. No matter how tough things got, I worry about you. But I know if there's anyone who can survive this place, it's Lara Croft. Whatever happens, I want you to know that I loved you like the daughter I never had. I'm proud of you. Roth, I know you want me to ease off Lara, but I'm hard on her for a reason. This big, expensive ship and all its people are heading into uncharted, dangerous waters based on her theories. Lara needs to understand the weight of that responsibility. I know it was your call, but sometimes I think you forget that she isn't actually your daughter. No one else could get away with steering the Endurance into the Dragon's Triangle without at least some hard evidence. So you tell me, what convinced you? She's smart, I'll give her that. And I admit the expedition has potential. But big ideas and grand plans will only get us so far. You know as well as I do, nothing like this ever goes according to plan. Lara's green. If the shit hits the fan and she screws up, someone's gonna get hurt. Maybe it'll all play out fine. But until we're sailing home safe and sound with a pile of riches, I'm not giving that girl any slack. Well, it had to be done. Lara left me no choice. I've... If I thought she could play the game, I might have let her in on my plan, but she doesn't have the grit for this business. She isn't ruthless enough, and, and this discovery has to be mine. I've crossed the line, it, it, it won't look good, so... As unfortunate as it may be, she can't make it off this island. None of them can. And whatever happens with Sam, it just makes this whole story all the more newsworthy. I don't think Matthias or his Solari can be reasoned with, so I'll, I'll need to slip away as soon as this ritual is completed. I'll make the perfect sole survivor, returning with the authorities, the cameras, and an appropriately convincing expression of sorrow. How do I start? Okay. This is Lara Croft. An archaeologist from the Endurance, shipwrecked on an island in the Dragon's Triangle, east of Japan. This place is incredible. I've seen wrecks here that could date back centuries. We weren't the first, and I know we're not alone. Something isn't right about this place. If I don't get off this island, maybe someone will eventually find this. The thing about nightmares is sooner or later, you wake up. But there's no waking up from this place, which means I'm really here. I'm really doing these things. No, don't think about it, Lara. Not now. It won't help. I don't know what's happened to the rest of the crew. I hope they're okay. 
They have to be. They have to be. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but all that matters is that Roth finds a way to get us home. Thank God for Roth's training. All those treks, all those climbs. It's as if he'd been preparing me for something like this all along. It's clear that there are people living here, and they're organized. They're killing and recruiting. But why? It's like some kind of cult. But a cult of what? What do they want? What are they looking for? I can't get it out of my head. A storm that came out of nowhere, out of a clear sky, and brought down a plane. It's not rational. You know it's not rational, Lara. There must be some explanation. I... I just don't know what it is yet. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse. What were those things in the monastery? They were dressed like the storm guard, and the sounds they made almost inhuman. Shit, just listen to yourself, Lara. You sound like Dad. It's like they're the remnants of some lost civilization. Okay, now I really sound like Dad. All I know is they killed those men, and I have a feeling they wouldn't hesitate to kill me too. But I can't think about this now. Sam's in trouble, and I've got to get her back. She's counting on me. Madness. That's what this place is. Matthias thinks Himiko's spirit is keeping us here. That's not possible. It's not possible. But he's so beyond crazy that maybe he's come right back round to some kind of sane. The helicopter isn't our way off. You know that, Lara, in your gut. I have to warn the others. If we board it, we're dead. Tears won't bring me back, girl. That's what Roth would have said. I just can't believe he's gone. No more stories about my parents. No more mountain climbs. God, I wish they killed me instead. But they didn't. I'm here, I'm alive, and I'm certain that no boat or plane is going to get us off this island. At least not yet. I know the answer has something to do with Himiko in that monastery. I have to do something. I have to stop this. If I'm going to get to the ritual chamber in that monastery, we need to fix that boat. Ugh. I don't know how I'm going to convince the others to take it inland rather than off this island, but I have to find a way. Reyes won't be easy. She wants to get back to her daughter. And she's in pain over Roth. We all are. I still don't know exactly why Matthias wanted Sam in the first place, but it doesn't matter. She's back with us now. She's safe. The prayer I found on that general talked about a soul in a decaying body being the cause of the storms. I know he must be talking about the last Sun Queen, but I don't understand what Himiko has to do with this. She was the first queen. Somehow Matthias thinks Sam's connected, and that can't be good. Damn you, Whitman, you'll do anything for a story. I know the answer is inside that ritual chamber, but getting to it won't be easy. The Stormguard are devoted to guarding it. I know I have to do this, but I'm so scared of what I'm going to find in there. When we washed up on this rock, the rain and wind pounded us for days. We couldn't build shelter or forage for food. Christ, we couldn't even move. It was like some enormous hand was holding us down. Just as the storm was finally breaking, Father Matthias came to us. He was calm and soft-spoken. He seemed to know us, our names, where we were from. He spoke to us in our native language, and we listened. And as we listened, he told us the truth of this island. He offered us a choice, salvation or death. 
Some chose to defy him. And without hesitation, he killed them then and there. Father Matthias didn't seem malicious or angry, just calm and decisive. As I stood there in the sand, wet with the blood of my comrades, I knew I could never refuse him. For better or worse, I now follow Father Matthias. If I'm gonna be stuck on his island, at least I have the best possible job. He calls me his first salary. Matthias might be insane, but he's smart and dangerous. He knows things about this island. I believe is our only chance of ever getting out of here. Matthias keeps us happy. We control the guns and the food. Anything the storm brings to this island is ours, and we decide the fate of any new survivors. Any who defy us are killed. We are masters of this fucked up prison. Matthias has us look for physically strong men for the Brotherhood, but none too smart. They must be willing to take orders and work. Any who question or resist are immediately killed. And the women? Matthias decides their fate. Most are sacrificed to the Dark Walkers, but some are chosen for the ritual. We put up with this insane ceremony. Some brothers are even starting to believe in it. Something clearly controls the storms around this cursed island, and it will never let us leave. Father Matthias claims to speak to it. Her, this Sun Queen spirit, or whatever it is, I don't know what to believe. I'm just doing what I can do to survive. There are over a hundred of us now. We've started work clearing out the old palace, and soon construction will begin on a city around the base of the mountain. The Japanese built a cargo holding system here years ago that we've gotten up and running again. Matthias claims we're building in honor of the Sun Queen, like some ancient Egyptian monument, but it's obvious what's going on here. Matthias is stalling for time. This massive project is just to keep them distracted. Even with the rituals and storms and rampant killings, it's only a matter of time before they turn against him. And when they do, I'll be ready to take control. Every new brother is assigned a job, a purpose in the Solari. As long as Matthias continues to prove his spiritual connection to the Sun Queen, they will fall in line and believe. Initiation to the Brotherhood is brutal. We need to destroy their humanity so that they in turn can be inhumane. New recruits are thrown into the depths of the caverns or left to starve and fend for themselves for days, sometimes weeks. Those who make it out alive are welcomed with open arms. I still can't explain what kind of power Matthias has tapped into. But I don't care anymore. We're never getting off this goddamn island. Some days, I'm convinced we're all in hell already. God knows with the things we've done, we might as well be. Days have passed since the plane crash. For a second time, we attempted to escape by boat with disastrous results. I knew it would happen, just like the first time. The calm sea turned hostile with no explanation. The moment we made for open water, the winds picked up, followed by an impossible wave. Like a child's toy, our lifeboat was smashed violently into the rocky shore. Now, two more lie dead, and another is wounded beyond help. The others are starting to panic and they're looking to me for a plan. I do have one, but it doesn't include them. They are weak and stupid, a liability in this place. I suggested they make another attempt to leave, but I won't join them. To do so would be suicide. This is clear to me now. I am alone now. The rest of them are dead. 
This is for the best. I watched from the cliffs as their makeshift boat was tossed and turned by the storms. The clouds looked like a hand upon the water, desperately clawing at their doomed boat. None survived the wrath of the storm. I observed it carefully. The storm was localized and sudden. And just as suddenly, it was gone. And this is the most interesting detail. It didn't seem random. I sensed emotion, something deliberate. I don't know what's happening on this island, not yet. But if I ever hope to escape, I must understand this phenomenon. Now my real work begins. A plan is taking shape in my mind. In order to unlock the power of this island, I first need to understand what has happened here. I need time and room to study this place. There are many mysteries here. Foremost of which, the ruins of an ancient Japanese empire and a mysterious queen. It all started with her. Over the years, there have been other survivors, but I've avoided them. And if they got in my way, I was not merciful. But now I know I need others. In order to move forward, I must fully control this island. So I will gather a small group of loyal followers. They must understand power and the need to organize. But more importantly, they cannot hesitate to kill or use violence. It will be part of their life here. They will need structure and purpose and work. But when this island is mine, I will discover the true secret of the storms. My patience has been rewarded. At long last, I have my lieutenants, my enforcers of the way. The storms brought me exactly the men I need to begin building the Solari Brotherhood. Strong of body, weak of will. They were broken in the storms, weakened and vulnerable. And I raised them up again. Now they serve me. And through me, her. The Sun Queen. She is showing me the way. She has always shown me the way. I cannot deny what I have seen. And soon, neither will they. She is everywhere on this island. But the Solari Brotherhood must grow. We will recruit as many as we can. I will draft laws, create a code for them to live by, and they will build for the Sun Queen while I search for the key. The Solari, my warriors of the sun, they have grown strong in number. And I have discovered everything I require to move my plans forward. It is time for us to move inland. We will build our city high up in the mountains around the old palace. From there, we can protect ourselves from the Oni Guardians, and I can access all points on the island swiftly. I must be prepared to capture anyone who comes to this place. I now know what I seek. The key to escaping this place. And perhaps, much, much more. It may take years, but I will find her. The years pass and I now hear her whispers in my sleep. It is the Sun Queen. She is urging me on. I see her magnificent face with every sunrise. Soon now. My Solari toil in her name. Building a city from all that she has brought to the island. Torturing and sacrificing in her name. Soon now, we will find the one. I long for escape, but not simply from this island. From all of this, the wrecks, bodies, and squalor. If I can bring my queen back, it will all vanish in an instant. And like the sun rising anew, she will bathe all the land and seas with her light, burning away everything. I will emerge from this scorched earth, 
reborn and pure. Expedition Field Report. Despite loss of two cargo ships to intense storms, the expedition has made landfall. We've established a communication center high in the mountains, and coastal base construction has commenced. Initial surveys have revealed several possible excavation sites. The island is much larger than we originally anticipated, and layered with many centuries of history. The task of identifying the source of the storms will be long and arduous. But if we succeed in our mission here, our victory in this war will be certain. It... it happened again. Private Koske. He was on gate duty last night. No one heard anything. And this morning, they found his helmet. Nothing else. No tracks of his leaving, no blood, no shell casings, nothing. The others are talking about Chinese partisans. Maybe even American GIs. Damn fools! They have no idea what's happening here. It is the Oni who stalk us. The restless, evil spirits. They live in the old places of this island. We are trespassers here. And they are watching us, waiting. All these wrecks, the ruins, this entire island is a graveyard. It's only a matter of time. The Oni will come for us. Months of excavation has at last yielded new information concerning the weather patterns gripping this island. The tomb of an important general dating from the Kamakura period was discovered in our coastal dig site. This discovery is the missing piece of the puzzle. It will allow us to finally gain control of the storms. Soon after we discover the tomb, they came. The Oni. First, the lights went out. Then, then the screaming started. Was it us or them? That horrible sound. It still rings in my head. They wore the armor of my ancestors. They, they, they cut us down with ancient blaze. Gunfire, shouting, blood. We couldn't stop them. Everything turned to chaos. And then silence. They were gone. Why did they leave? Why didn't they kill us all? Captain Osaka is in command now. We, we are leaving the base, but not the island. We're heading inland, to the monastery. There's no other way. We must follow the Oni, all of us. If we can't control the star, we must destroy it. But I know, we, we're all going to die. Our coastal base has been attacked by unknown assailants. We suspect the Americans have arrived and are attempting to sabotage our operations. Communications have been disrupted across the island, and we've sustained heavy losses. Many of our soldiers have simply disappeared. All remaining personnel are proceeding to the ancient monastery to ensure control of the weather phenomenon. We expect to meet heavy resistance en route. Request reinforcements as soon as possible. We never, never had a chance. They were waiting for us, hundreds of them. We never even made it to the sacred chamber. From the beginning, we were doomed. And now I wait for my ancestors to take me. I can hear them. The only are killing my brothers, eating them, consuming their souls. So much death. I, I'm the last one. What is my fate? Will I become one of them? Ancestors, hear me. Please, take me away from this, before the only come for me. Please, take me to the afterlife. Let me die in peace. Lara is having a crisis of confidence. 
So, for her sake, I'll keep up a happy face. But something about this expedition has been making me nervous. I have butterflies in my stomach. As we sail closer to the Dragon's Triangle, I'm starting to feel nauseous. And this isn't the excited kind of nerves. What the hell is wrong with me? I should be excited! This trip is going to be awesome. I just need to shake off this feeling. Maybe I can convince Lara to take a break and have a drink with me. Whitman is such a drama queen. I can't believe the hissy fit he threw during the filler shoot. I mean, this is his job, right? It's not like he's offering anything to the actual research part of this expedition. Once we find Yamatai and the cameras are rolling, he'll calm down. He might be a total pain in the ass, but he knows how to work a scene. I just need to do my job and keep my cool. Lara doesn't know it, but I've been shooting footage of her too. I really want to make sure she gets the credit she deserves. And besides, she looks great on film. I think she's a natural. That's probably gonna drive Whitman out of his mind with jealousy. But by the time he finds out, we'll be enjoying the premiere in Telluride. I can't believe we're actually on an expedition to find the homeland of my ancestors. Ever since I told Lara the story of Himiko years ago, she's been hunting for its location. I never really gave it much thought. That any of this could actually be real history. My grandmother used to tell me the story like it was a memory. Many thousands of years ago, Queen Himiko ruled the land of Yamatai. The sun rose at Himiko's command, and she ruled everything its rays touched, from the mountains to the sea and beyond. But one day... Yamatai simply disappeared without a trace. Forgotten in time. I suppose on some level, I have Lara to thank for this job. She's always believed in me. The academics at college dismissed filmmaking as nonsense. They just saw me as this ditzy American troublemaker with the camera. But you know what? Most people can use a little trouble in their lives. And deep down, I know Lara just wanted to cut loose sometimes. She just needed a little help unlocking her inner party girl. We had so many awesome adventures together. That insane backpacking trip through Bulgaria. <laughs> I was always dragging her out to clubs. And the hiking trip on the south face of Kilimanjaro. All Lara wanted to do was explore ruins. <laughs> but who knew we'd run into so many cute guys? Certainly not Lara. <laughs> I have a feeling this expedition is going to be one for the books. Lara with her notebook, me with my camera, another crazy adventure. Well, this is a right fucking mess. So much for a quiet retirement. If I find Roth somewhere on this goddamn island, I'm gonna punch him square in the mouth for bringing us here. And then, then the two of us will kill every last one of these crazed sons of bitches. It'll be just like the old days. Minus Sticky Croft. If he was alive, he'd want to study these bastards. Some kind of twisted religious cult. He'd find them fascinating. I hope his daughter knows better and finds a good place to hide. These nut jobs are dangerous, and I worry about those kids. Alex, Sam, this place will eat them alive. Lara's totally right. Something seriously fucked up is going on here. The natural phenomenon that causes the weather to go ape shit, the military research base, some kind of Sun, queen, and a crazy cult. I mean, if I didn't know better, I'd say this is a big put-on. Are there TV cameras hidden in the trees? I mean, you know, I, I gotta admit, it's scaring the shit out of me. I, I keep cracking jokes to cover it up. Reyes looks ready to kick my ass. I think I need to do something useful before I completely lose it. I wish I could be more like Lara. She just... <laughs> she blows me away. Not only is she brilliant, but she's also... An amazing ass kicker. Now, if she didn't notice me before, she sure as hell won't now. But maybe I can still do something to get her attention. I feel something in this place. Something I haven't felt since I was a child. When my father would go insane with rage, I would hide with my brother, and he would tell me the tale of Pania of the Reef. I remember feeling the ocean calling to me. I wanted to escape, to give myself to the silent sea. And now, as I look at the reefs surrounding this beach, I feel that urge again.
I see Pania's green seaweed hair woven among the wreckage. I feel her tears in the spray of the waves lashing upon the rocks. Lara is right. This island is cursed. There is a rage here that will never let us go. If the worst happens and I'm the last one standing, I will let Pania take me. I will swim away and join my brother in the waves. Command to operative. Stop. Trinity is concerned. Stop. Acquisition of star phenomenon unacceptable. Stop. Sabotage of access operation imperative. Stop. A kind of mortar and pestle. Probably used for preparing medicinal herbs. Used in traditional Japanese herbal medicine, or Kampo. <laughs> Looks like this vial has been sealed for many years. It's burdock, a root traditionally used in Kampo to fight inflammation. This traditional no mask represents a hateful woman in the guise of a demon. Japanese no actors could tilt their heads up and down to make the rigid mask express different emotions. This mask was used in the traditional Japanese no theater. I think it represents a demon or oni. Silk fan. Could have been used by a villager or a noble, maybe. It's a gun by, used by samurai to relay orders to their soldiers in battle. Pretty solid. Must be made of stained cypress. This must have belonged to a US Marine. Were they on the island in force or just an advance party? Someone looked at this picture many times. It's been folded and unfolded repeatedly. American soldiers would never have left these behind. I don't think any of them made it out of here alive. Some kind of soldier's identity tags. I don't recognize the kanji. Were these used during World War II? Alloy badge awarded to marksman second class in the Imperial Japanese Army. The date reads May J6, which is 1873. This is a Tempo Suho. Hard to read the date, but Japan made thousands of these in the mid 1800s. Portuguese minted these in the 16th century for their colony in Malacca, Malaysia. This must have come from one of the Ogalian wrecks. This coin probably found its way into Japanese circulation sometime in the mid 19th century. An Edo period coin minted in the late 17th century. It could have come from any number of old wrecks on this island. Hmm. Singed around the edges. What happened to your owner? Where have all the children gone? There's a picture of two girls. This wallet belonged to a father. This was used by scribes of the Chinese royal court.
Was this actually used as a headrest, or was it part of a larger statuary set? I'll research it if I ever get out of this place. Hmm. This one seems shaped to be slightly more comfortable. Looks to be early 18th century. I remember black silk fans were used when conducting funeral rites for nobles. A fan made for a special occasion, probably a wedding. Hmm, doesn't look older than a few years. 19th century folded fans were often inscribed with poems or accounts of important events. This Chinese earthenware is thousands of years old. Could they have visited this island before the rise of Yamatai? I've seen similar artifacts from the Ban Jain site in Thailand. How did this get all the way to Yamatai? A Satsuma porcelain vase, probably early Edo period. This Chinese dagger is extremely old. Dad had a similar one in his collection dating from 854 BC. An ancient Chinese dagger, probably around 100 AD. How long have ships been crashing on this island? This is fairly modern, perhaps 18th century. The gold carp carving was designed to contrast with the black lacquer finish. This might be Yuan Dynasty. Could it be from Kubla Khan's lost fleet? A Ming Dynasty jade figurine. But this one looks genuine. It's a ceremonial drinking vessel from the Song Dynasty. <sighs> Beautiful craftsmanship. In Edo, Japan, traditional men's garments had no pockets. Inro were miniature containers used to hold personal effects, like an ancient form of wallet. Inro are usually lacquered wood, but this one's made of brass. Probably dates from the 19th century. This Inro was probably used by a military commander to carry official orders and seals. This gold lacquered Inro contains writing implements and dried ink. Likely the possession of a court scribe or historian. Were these gifts for the ancient rulers of Yamatai? Or was there some kind of battle here? Another Chow Dynasty helmet. The elaborate decorative designs suggest royalty. I was sent here to investigate a new threat to Trinity's interests on this island. When I arrived, I discovered Matthias in his Solari cult. I believed then that Matthias could never acquire the star phenomenon. But I was wrong. I should have killed him when I had a chance. But now it's too late. I've been compromised and mortally wounded. My mission incomplete. My time is short. If you've deciphered the numbers and found this stash, then you must be my replacement. Kill Matthias. He's close to reawakening the enemy that has long lain dormant. This cannot be allowed to happen. <laughs> 